Is that, at this point, a dream? This is not science fiction. This is science fact. We have the tools, we have the technology to do this all right now. And you think we can, at some point, inoculate the world against these killer viruses? Killer viruses that we haven't seen or even imagined will be protected against. This week, OxyTech began the process of releasing 140,000 male eggs in six locations along the Keys. That is part of a live experiment greenlit by the EPA. Though some environmentalists are crying foul. Genetic engineered organisms are not something that we can control. The potential solution starts at OxyTech's lab, where tiny eggs are injected with a modified DNA strain ultimately producing mosquitoes that have what's called a self-limiting gene. Well, this is the Pentagon has developed a chip which can detect the COVID-19 virus in your body once implanted. Gel engineered to continuously test your blood. It's a sensor. This tiny green thing in there? That tiny green thing in there. You put it underneath your skin and what that tells you is that there are chemical reactions going on inside the body and that signal means you're going to have symptoms tomorrow. Wow. There's an actual transmitter in that? Yeah, it's like a check engine light. Check this sailor out before he infects other people. That's right. Sailors would get the signal, then stop them all. A nationwide popular strike in Colombia has entered its ninth day despite a deadly crackdown by police and military officers. This after numerous deaths were reported during days of anti-government protests. But Colombia's police have the firepower and aren't afraid to use it. At least 19 people have died and more than 800 injured in protests across major cities in Colombia. Videos shot by residents of two working-class neighborhoods apparently show the police shooting indiscriminately against protesters. The demonstrations have since morphed into broader protests against the government. Over two dozen protesters have been killed since the nationwide uprising erupted last week. Colombia's gross domestic product fell by 6.8% in 2020, its deepest crash in half a century. President Ivan Duque has axed the tax that favoured the rich. The finance minister has resigned. They say corruption is rife in Duque's right-wing government. On Wednesday, hundreds staged a die-in in Bogota to protest the rampant police brutality over the past week. On Tuesday night, over a dozen police stations were set on fire in the capital, Bogota. Meanwhile, the United Nations has said it's, quote, deeply alarmed by the situation in Cali, where at least 15 protesters have been killed after police repeatedly opened fire. What started as a protest against tax hikes has billowed to a nationwide cry against inequalities. And now, look, incredible from Britain, uh, you know, because I, I hope that the Prime Minister does back his words about fighting the cancel culture and duty policies with actions, because if he doesn't, we will become like Britain, because and look at this. We have a 71-year-old Christian preacher out in the streets talking about how the Bible taught that marriage was between a man and a woman. Yeah, if you don't like it, move on, go keep shopping. Police actually arrested him. They hit him. I think they kicked him, if you look at the video, and they handcuffed him for an edge hate speech. They're arresting the gay man, look. They're arresting him. Oh, 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 Absolutely extraordinary. Brendan, I would never have guessed that one day I would see footage like that from the country that gave us uh, one of the greatest poems in defense of free speech by John Milton, uh, made a tradition of it. In the name of compassion and of tolerance, police then attack and handcuffed a 71-year-old preacher for simply opening his mouth. What's happened to your country? We have a situation now where in Britain, 
it is almost a speech crime to read the Bible in public, to profess the Christian <laughs> faith in public. And that should worry everyone who believes in freedom of religion and freedom of speech. What's happening is that the category of hate speech is increasingly being used to control moral thought itself and the right of people to express their deeply held beliefs. We're finally giving Snow White the happily ever after that she deserves. Fair enough, we all know the story. You'd have to be dopey not to. Sorry. But anyway, now Disney are in trouble from the feminist warriors because they want to leave in the crucial element of the story. You know, the prince, the kiss and all of that. Here it is in the original. Now, Snow White seemed kind of grateful, didn't she? The dwarfs seemed kind of happy, but the soulless, woke warriors complained that Snow White was kissed without her consent. <laughs> really? Well, Mark Latham and I have talked about it, education. I suppose the one good thing is education, or shall we say no education, or flawed education, has now hit the front pages of our newspapers. The question is, where do we go from here? We're not in a crisis, I'm telling you. It is much worse than that. As someone who, if I might say, immodestly taught successfully, got results and inculcated into young people an appreciation for literature and learning, I find the headlines make the disturbing news. And I'll take some of them from today. Quote, spare a thought for the teachers who are expected to navigate their way through this murky document. That's the change national curriculum to work out what they should be teaching or indeed whether they should be teaching at all since the verb to teach hardly appears in the draft curriculum. Another, it was only a matter of time before the gospel according to woke would be inflicted upon us. Pity our deprived younger generation who'll know no better and live in ignorance. Another, the already declining standards in education are about to get a lot worse. The intention to interlace indigenous history into every facet of the curriculum at the expense of global history will condemn future generations to the dystopian future of the woke left. A Queensland University academic has called for the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority responsible for this draft curriculum to be abolished, said, quote, will create a nation of cretins in a world where they have no understanding of the history of civilization, human thought, human philosophy, philosophy, values or principles. All this, if you've ever wondered why your children and grandchildren have such activist views, this is Peter Credlin on climate change, identity and Australia's place in the world. Now you know it's because the national curriculum is designed to turn them out that way. Schooling's no longer about teaching students how to read, write, count and think. It's not about knowledge and insights into math, science, history and literature. It's about giving young Australians a politically correct bias and it's about to get worse. Another, schools will teach kids how to say no to sex, stand up to bullies and dob in pedophiles in a modernised Australian curriculum to tackle sexual abuse and family violence." Unquote. Uh, parents, is that what you send your kids to school for? Finally, the Indigenous leader Warren Mundine has slammed the new curriculum, claiming its authors have sought to inject, quote, critical race theory into the classroom and create a society where people are divided by the colour of their skin. He said, we're heading into really dangerous territory when we start, start down the path of critical race theory. And when you've got a re active rewriting of Australian history here, that's really worrying. That's it. That we're no longer in the business of straight historical fact. No. It's political indoctrination instead of education. 